Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. Before we get started, just a quick thank you for getting Extreme Genes to where it is today. We're on radio stations all over America, and our podcast is growing exponentially. I'm often asked, what can I do to support Extreme Genes? Well, that's easy. Become a part of our Extreme Genes Facebook community and like our page. Share the podcast with your friends. Follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, support our sponsors through links on our website. They're the best in the business. Thanks again. Now let's get on to this week's podcast. Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and Extreme Genes. Com. Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma pig slopping in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And you have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, your host on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And it is our first show back since Roots Tech, the largest conference on family history in the world that was uh, just this past week or so in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I got to tell you, it's taken me just a little bit to get my voice back because it's it's loud, had a little bit of cold working. And so trying to talk through that. I got a little bit squeaky there for a while, but uh, I'm back and in full health and excited to break down Roots Tech with David Allen Lambert coming up here in just a few minutes. And later in the show, we're going to do our DNA segment for the month with Dr. Kasha Brick from 23andMe.com. And we're going to talk about what DNA says about people and how they come together. Little love thing going on with DNA as we celebrate Valentine's Day weekend. Let's check in now with David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist for the New England Historic Genealogical Society and American Ancestors.org in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, David. Greetings from Beantown Fish. I hope that you uh, survived Roots Tech. I know that was an amazing time for me from beginning to end and uh, lots of fun, especially at the My Heritage after party. Oh, yeah. Watching you uh, work the karaoke microphone, sir, was uh, something I'm still recovering from. I want you to know that right now. Well, I hope that's a good recovery. You know, always, <laughs> when Tom McKenty mentioned he was singing, I said, well, if he can do it, I can grab it. You were good. I was Thank impressed. You. I had no idea you had it in you. Yeah, it's all that musical theater, I guess, that I you know, occasionally <laughs> the windpipes are good for more than just radio. <laughs> all right. What's going on with Family Histoire News this week? Fill us in, my friend. Well, first off, to you and your lovely bride, a happy Valentine Day weekend. Thank you, sir. And uh, you know, how many years you've been married? Uh, this year, this summer, it'll be 35. Okay, well, for me, it's going to be 28. But we don't hold a candle to a lovely couple out in Connecticut. This is John and Ann Bitar's 83rd wedding anniversary. Oh, my gosh. 83? What, what were they married at, like, six? <laughs> well, he's currently 104, <laughs> and she's currently 100. So it looks like he was a 21-year-old and a 17-year-old that fell in love and got married. They have known each other since the Great Depression and fell in love. In fact, he used to give her rides to school in his 1932 Ford Roadster. <laughs> and he's still driving, I understand, by the way, at 104. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's an amazing thing to think that technology has embraced so many of our older friends and listeners. This couple, this weekend, have actually decided to tweet the secrets of their marriage. They're on Twitter? Yeah. Oh, that's insane. So I definitely need to follow them. I'm sure they're going to get more following than the U.S. president have ever done on his tweets. So that's a great, great story. We tip our head in remembrance of another person who was a centenarian, a gal from Boston, Mass., Alice Dixon, who was born here in 1907. She was an African-American veteran with the 68th, 88th Battalion in World War II. And when she died on the 27th of January at 108, she was America's oldest female veteran of World War II. Oldest living veteran, period. 
Yeah, that's true. But she's yeah. definitely someone who's seen a lot of history. And our heart goes out to her and her family and friends. I, I can't tell you the winter that we're having. I know that the country is wrapped in cold weather, even all the way down to Florida. But I was thinking that I'm so looking forward to our cruise. It just has a warmth feeling about right. it. Right. know what's in the fall. Yes, in September. Find out about it on our Facebook page, by the way. Absolutely. We can see both of us, and hopefully they'll have karaoke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, please. Yes. Spare us Listen, that. I know about a certain person, and they're great singing as well, who's on the other end of this mic. So I want to just <laughs> let you know you'll be in for a good surprise with Fish singing as well. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, I had an idea. 2017, hopefully we'll have another cruise. 2018, I've already got a ship lined up for us. Tell us what it is. Well, it is called, you may have heard of it before, the Titanic. Shut up. Yes. The Titanic is not being raised from the ocean bottom and being refloated. A company out of Australia is building Titanic 2. This vessel is going to rival the size of the ship plus 13 feet, apparently. Wow. It's going to launch, and it's going to go from China to Dubai in 2018. So maybe we can convince them they need a genealogical talk. <laughs> um, you know, and maybe our listeners by then will already be out in Dubai, into China, and they'll just be a demand that they'll want fish and Dave Lambert right there on the cruise. It'll be our third annual no, no, no. taking of the Titanic okay. by storm. Wait a minute. Let me ask you this. Would you want to go on a cruise on the Titanic? Mm, that's a really good question. I'll take about 10 seconds to answer. Yes. You would. <laughs> because I have been fascinated with the Titanic since I was 11 years sure. old. Sure. And I think that somebody is going to the detail of trying to replicate it just to look at it docked would be interesting. Yeah, that's no true. Be on the ocean. But you note that the cruise that they're taking from southern China to Dubai is not really an iceberg lake yeah. territory. <laughs> Good so point. They didn't recreate it in April of 2018 to go from Southampton to New York. But hopefully when they do that, it's going to be in the much warmer weather. Th that's true. And they're going to have better technology anyway. They'll have Wi-Fi. lifeboats. Life yes. boats on this boat will be adequate for every passenger, and it's costing approximately $500 million to build. Wow. All right. So we'll see how that one develops. So that's a really exciting one. And, you know, with tech tips going on, there were so many things that we're going to talk about what happened at Roots Tech, but I want to just give a shout out to our sponsor, MyHeritage, and the exciting news about the audio app that is available from MyHeritage now. You can record your stories and put it right on your MyHeritage account, so that's going to be Oh, that's great. great. That's a great advance, no question about it. And all you have to do to get to it is go to www.myheritage.com slash mobile. While talking of technology, NEHGS, as you know, listeners of Extreme Genes get to go on as a guest user, as anybody else, so spread the word. And we have free database that lasts for a month, and the new one that we're sponsoring is the Vital Records of Lincoln, Maine, from 1829 to 1892. So if you have some ancestors that lived up in Maine back in the 19th century, check it out, and more exciting databases to come. All right. Good stuff, David. Thanks so much. Now, you're coming back for another segment. I will. And we're going to talk about some of the highlights from Roots Tech. We're going to actually hear a story from a listener that I met that'll just blow your mind. It's good stuff. It's coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. World, and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now MyHeritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. 
Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And we are back. America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, with my good friend David Allen Lambert. He is the chief genealogist for the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. And this is our annual breakdown of Roots Tech, the Roots Tech Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, which took place last week. And, uh, David, I think for the most part, the things we generally take away from this thing are the products that are out there, the new innovations and the new inventions, in fact, that enhance our efforts to discover and preserve and share. I'll tell you, RootsTech is really the place for the Innovator Summit and all the new products by vendors that are already in the field and brand new ones that have just started. It never ceases to amaze me. Some great things, some really amazing things that I hope our listeners try out, download. Most of them are free. Well, let's start with this one, Forever. Now, this is one of the uh, the gold sponsors that were there at RootsTech. In fact, I'm going to talk to the founder of the company and have him on the show next week. But this is a really interesting concept. It really is. And what Forever is, is allows you to, one, they offer a scanning service so you can box up your pictures and send them. They have software if you want to digitize them yourself and actually create online books, etc., and online displays. You can invite your family to be part of it, but the biggest part of it is their data storage. Now, I'll right. tell you about this. It's amazing. You have the possibility of getting an account with them for your lifetime plus a hundred years. Now, the question would be that anybody would ask is, how can anybody guarantee that something's going to last in the cloud for a hundred years beyond your lifetime? And this is where it gets a little bit different. It is. In fact, they're basing it on the model of an insurance company. I actually asked them, I said, well, how do I know who's going to be alive in a hundred years? So your heirs assign heirs. And essentially, it becomes your legal property. You don't have to worry about, oh, my goodness, am I going to find somebody who's going to be able to read my USB drive in a hundred years from now? They're going to refresh all that data. They're going to keep a standard part of the operating cost of the company. In fact, will be to actually make sure that the data transitions into your lifetime plus that hundred years. I I think it's amazing to think that this has so many applications, both on the family history level and small historical societies and libraries. I've got some great ideas that I want to talk to them about because I think it's more far-reaching than just sure. genealogy. Also, we had the Innovator Summit. That was the first day. That was on Wednesday. And that's where all these people come in either with new inventions or something they have innovated. And there's a $100,000 prize money involved in this thing. And the winner was a company called Tap Jeans. 
they were very interesting indeed because a lot of people will test their DNA to know about their family health history, but their concept is crowdsourcing and using your own social media connections to reach out to cousins to track family health history. Fascinating and obviously the big winner for the Innovator Summit. Well, it can affect your treatments. Oh, absolutely. And I think that, for instance, I am a type 2 diabetic. I mean, I want to let my other cousins know. I mean, and some of them, it may just not come up because I don't see them. But sure. if their kids get diagnosed, at least they know the route that they may have followed through. There are so many different great people at the Innovative Summit. Another one I wanted to mention, which was an intriguing new product, is Journal. And it's pronounced Journal, but it's spelled J-R-N-L. Yeah, just get rid of all the vowels. Exactly. In Journal.com, I've encouraged people. My New Year's resolution, as I mentioned, was to keep a journal this year. This is a way to do it electronically in a secure environment. You can invite people like your cousins and friends to participate. You can put in photos and videos, etc. And it's an exciting new product, and I'm looking to see that company grow and take off with what they're offering. And I'm going to give it a try. It's free to start, and as anything else, there are premium levels where you want more space for things you pay. But I'll, I'll give it a try. And uh, maybe it'll give me a chance to uh, remember to keep a journal. Right. <laughs> Good point. The next one that I saw, and I know that I had you chat with him a bit, is Fami City, which is a French company. All the way over from Paris, France, they came to Rootstech. It's a sort of a dot com for social media to connect your family and share what you've already done, but with no databases. So nice. The price is free, so FAMICity.com. Another thing that I don't think anybody thinks about so much in technology, but books, but on a very basic level, Deanna Novak from Kids Heritage Incorporated from Orlando, Florida, was there. And what she offers is the groundbreaking old technology, a book. Yeah, that's right. She was my neighbor, actually, the neighboring booth. And it's just absolutely astonishing because if you've got a kid – and you want to introduce them to their family history. She basically has a template with countries. For instance, uh, if, if you can give her four countries that your family descends from, they'll put that in there, and it can go up to six. And then they customize the book with the kid's name and birth date in there and maybe a little greeting from somebody. It's a hardbound kid's book, and it tells them about the countries and their heritage. How cool is that? It really is. In fact, I you know, was lucky to get one for Hannah, and she's already enjoyed it. My 12-year-old listens to Dad ramble on about pedigree charts and genealogy and DNA tests, but this is a real good way to get your kids interested. And, of course, incorporate your own family stories into it, and there's a spot in it that you can put in your own family tree so they can have that. And it's a, really a nice little product. Absolutely. Um, you talked to a lot of people at Roots Tech. Did you get any interesting stories while you were there? You know, I, I did, and in fact, one of them I got on tape because I just thought it was so uniquely special. You want to hear it? I'd love to hear it. All right, listen to this. This is Ellen from Idaho. My story is that I found a cross-stitch sampler that my third great-grandmother made when she was eight years old from the Internet. So there was a lady in Canada that found it at an estate sale, didn't know anything about it, fell in love with it, did a Google search on the name that my third great-grandmother cross-stitched on there, her name. So she did a Google search on Mary Elsley Collinson, found some information that one of my distant cousins had put on the internet. This distant cousin lives in Australia. The Australia cousin emailed my family and said, there's a lady in Canada that has a cross stitch that was made by your third great grandmother. So I emailed this lady in Canada. I said, this is my third great grandmother. I really want to have this. And she <laughs> said, I knew that that was a risk. If I did a Google search, she said, I, I don't know. I love the piece, so I'll get back to you. I thought, I'm never going to hear from her again. A couple of days later, she emailed me back, and she said, I love this piece, but if you'll let me have it for two years, and if you still want it, contact me, and I'll sell it to you for market value. I wrote it down in my calendar <laughs> for two years from then. Your two years are up. My, I wrote her back and said, I'm still here. I want it. And she said, I was hoping that you would forget but I figured that you wouldn't. <laughs> so we made arrangements, and she had sent me pictures, and so we made arrangements.
months for me to purchase it from her. And so now I have this piece that was cross stitched when my third great grandmother, Mary Elsley Collinson, was eight years old in England. We, I still haven't tracked down how it got to Canada. There are two little branches of the family that go there, but I can't get it to the right place yet. But when she was eight years old, she made this, and now I have it hanging in my living room. And now what year are we talking about? It was made in 1812. Oh. Isn't that incredible? It just brings me to tears every time I walk by it. <laughs> and, and did you hear the dropped jaws from all the people around us as she was telling that story, David? A 200-year-old family heirloom yep. found via the internet. Well, doesn't that make the internet all the worthwhile just for that? Well, you know, I found an original movie of my father playing in a big band in the 1930s on eBay years ago. And it, it just, it's a treasure. Unbelievable stuff. The things that are titanic in the industry are a lot of the dot-com names. But a company that I've never heard of before, it produced something very mammoth. In fact, this titanic or mammoth chart was the 30 by 100 foot long chart with over 200 Thousand names. Did you see it? I, I, well, I had picture taken in front of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> they even have pictures. They have life-size pictures of people climbing up it. And it, it's just astonishing. I'm sure it's the largest in the world. It was from uh, genealogicalwallcharts.com. Mm -hmm. And 200,000 names on there. And, and these lines went back to Moses. You know, I was wondering how to get some of the stuff I got at Rootstech back in my suitcase. That would be a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> how do they pack that up? I don't know, but I bet you all the data fits on a USB drive. Right, right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we get so micro on some levels of our research and so macro on others. That's absolutely true. We're talking about the Roots Tech Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, that took place this past week. The largest in the world, 25,000 people attended over uh, four days and another 125 or so, 125,000 watched online for live streams. And, uh, of course, the keynote speakers were very important there, and we got to meet one of them, David. Oh, we did. My good friend uh, of NEHGS, and I had the honor to do her genealogy for her. Right. Doris Kearns Goodwin, quite the lady and the historian's historian, as I like to say. And she's so very pleasant, too. Just really uh, nice to be around. Well, especially when you're dressed as the first president of the United States. I mean, how, how could she say no to want to chat with you? I mean, there might be a book in the works and just that conversation alone. We did a photograph as if we were actually dancing the quadrille or something, and she just loved it. It was really fun. And you can see the picture. It's on our Facebook page for Extreme Jeans, so check that out. And a lot of fun. It really was. And I'll tell you, there was just so many happy people at that conference. If one thing that Roots Tech does, besides the technology, is the networking. Between sitting with people at breakfast and all the way up to like the after party with MyHeritage.com, it's bonding. I mean, I have more Facebook friends now <laughs> than I yeah. did when I went. And I've got a pocket full of business cards and lots of emails to send and phone calls to make. So it's a really good networking opportunity, no matter where you sit in the industry and genealogy and if you're just a family historian i think there are so many people that go to it every year now just like at the national conferences that have been along for the over 20 years all right david thanks for coming on it was great being with you last week and uh, coming up next we're going to talk to dr kasha brick from 23 and me dna and she's going to be talking about what it is that they've learned through dna about how we are attracted to each other over this valentine's day weekend on extreme genes america's family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. 
Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the radio root sleuth. And it is so good to do DNA Day. I always enjoy talking to the experts at 23andMe about some of the things that they discover about us as people. And I've got Dr. Kasha Brick back on the line. Good to have you on the show again, doctor. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. I am uh, very excited about this study you did about real world couples, 15,298 of them, and you did a little analysis on them. And since it is Valentine's weekend, fill us in on what you discovered. Yeah, so we looked at, like you said, 15,000 couples who had children together and looked at correlations among phenotypes. So what that means is we looked at whether two people had the same trait or hobby or whatnot that they reported and found that the vast majority of traits that we looked at couples were more similar. So there was a correlation. For example, athletes were coupled with athletes, skiers hung out with skiers, hikers with hikers. We looked across a lot of different traits. So people who spoke a second language. No, um, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, we, we have always heard that opposites attract. What are you, you're destroying this. So we're looking at the data, and the data seems to suggest that for the vast majority of traits, people were more similar to each other. Of course, there were a few exceptions. Okay. Um, so some things were, were different. So opposites attracted. So night owls tended to be with morning people. If one of the couple attracted mosquitoes, the other happily didn't. Um, <laughs> and, and people with good direction were maybe partnered with people without such great sense of direction. That's funny you say all those things because that is the case in my marriage. Uh, I am a, 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 case in mine. <laughs> yeah, a, a late night person and my wife is very early. She attracts mosquitoes. She is my best mosquito repellent because they all go to her, not to me. And, and then here. and she's very good at directions and I'm not. And of course, I wouldn't ask for them anyway, right? Well, I, I happen to be the, the directions person in the relationship. Sure. Here. But yes, I mean, it works out great. <laughs> okay, so this is an interesting so. study because you're, you're, you're finding similarities have more to do with it than different although obviously people do complement themselves often, and that's very useful in keeping people together, I think, right? If, if you all had the same skills, there wouldn't be much to keep you going. Is there some kind of genetic predisposition to this? There's obviously a correlation, but is there a causation that brings us about? Yeah, what is so DNA showing us? That's, so the big question is always, does correlation imply causation? And in this case, we're just looking at correlations, so we don't know what's causing what. We can certainly speculate, and it's certainly fun to do so around Valentine's Day, but we don't know which came first, but we definitely see that there's definitely a lot of similarities among couples. You know, that doesn't necessarily tell us, you know, why they fell in love, whether they fell in love because they had all these in common, or maybe they grew these shared interests in common after becoming a couple, so we don't know which came first, but... It certainly speaks to couples sharing a lot in common. Do you notice the same thing with physical types? So we definitely saw some interesting tidbits. For example, couples who had similar BMIs were happier. 
Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, you don't usually see people who are really, really skinny with people who are really, really overweight. That's not as common. And it's very odd that there's a correlation between that and happiness. So I'm not, I'm not sure what to read into that or how to read into that. Mm-hmm. But luckily, luckily for me, my husband is very tall, and there's no such effect for height. So you don't have to be similar height to be happy, which is good because he's much taller than me. <laughs> well, so, so the bottom line is it kind of makes it a little more difficult, really, doesn't it, to determine what side certain traits came from if similar people are attracted to one another. That could come from either or both, right? Yeah, it's hard to say. Hard to say. So we had this recent study on, on morningness, whether you're a morning person or a night owl, and we definitely saw lots of genetic variants that are associated with whether you like to get up early in the morning like my husband or whether you like to sleep in late like me. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting variants that we found, some that were known previously, but also a handful that kind of makes sense but were, hadn't been seen before. And then we can do things that take it a little bit further. So we can look at whether being a morning person correlates with other things like body mass index, so BMI, or insomnia, or depression, or how long you sleep. So we can ask all these interesting questions because 23andMe customers tell us so many interesting things about themselves. Right. And this is something that there's no names attached to these surveys that you do. It's just among the customers in general, correct? Yeah. So we're, we're looking at aggregated data most of the time. So there's no names. We have no identifiable names, any sort of identifiable information on the customers when we're doing research. We're just using the correlations and the genetic data in aggregate to make these inferences. Right. So there's no association with name or anything. So it's all private and it adds to this development of this amazing database. Now, I read somewhere in this article that you people put together that there's something about being almost like fourth cousins. Yeah, so there was a study recently that looked at whether friends were genetically similar, so whether there was any correlation between who you called a friend and how they were related to you genetically. Right, not Um, necessarily related though, right? Not necessarily related, but the result was that individuals who were friends were more genetically similar than you would expect. And it was something along the lines of uh, as similar as, say, fourth cousins are more similar to each other than any two individuals at random. Mm -hmm. So it basically showed that you're more likely to be friends with people who are more similar to you, something like that. It kind of makes you wonder then how we're ever going to come together with our differences if our natural tendency is always to be together with people who are more like us and like-minded and look like us and think like us, that type of thing, doesn't it? That is sort of the way that the world works in some cases, but I think that there's also a strong argument that people who are put in the same place at the same time also tend to mix irrespective of background. So one of the research we did looking at individuals living across the U.S., we looked at um, people who identified as European-American, African-American, and Latino you know, it's clear that there's been an ongoing process of what we call admixture, or basically people from different backgrounds with DNA coming from different parts of the world mixing together. Mm -hmm. Um, And that seems to be the case in the States, at least, that that's been happening for a very long time. And you can definitely see the effects of that by looking at the DNA. You can see individuals with ancestry from Africa, from Europe, from the Americas. So you can definitely see assortative mating, meaning mating like with like, but also (laughs) different individuals coming together as well. Yeah, it's a melting pot, isn't it, right now going on? I mean, in two generations or so, most families will be mixed families in the United States, wouldn't you say? I don't know the latest research on that, but I definitely, looking at the genetics, can see that there's individuals who carry bits of ancestry even when they may not realize it. So there's a large proportion of individuals, especially in the South, who identify as white, who carry bits of African or Native American DNA, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and they may not know about it. Okay, and likewise, uh, African Americans who find they have European blood and Native American blood too, right? Yeah, so you see African Americans, especially from Oklahoma, who carry appreciable amounts of Native American ancestry, and that sort of traces back to historical migration. Oklahoma is formerly Indian territory where the Trail of Tears migration ended, and so you can sort of see the historical migration in the DNA of people there today. Wow. 
It's just a fascinating field, and of course, you do so much there, not only to determine more about how people are alike or dislike, but also to match up cousins so that we can extend our family tree lines, and that's why it's so much fun. Dr. Brick, thanks. We're out of time. I wish we had more, but we're going to get back with you people again next month and have another DNA day and find out what's on your minds. Great. Thanks. Looking forward to it. All right. I am too, and we'll talk to you then. Coming up next is Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. Authority on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher. So excited to tell you about our very first Extreme Genes Family History Cruise, September 13th through 18th, 2016. We'll be leaving out of Boston on Royal Caribbean with stops in Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. On days we're at sea, join me and David Allen Lambert, Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org for lectures and roundtables on several genealogical topics. See where your patriot ancestors fought in the revolution or where your loyalist ancestors claimed their new homes. For pricing, go to our Extreme Genes Facebook page or visit ExtremeGenes.com. Now is the time to make your reservations because when the cabins are gone, they're gone. Call Robin at Columbus Travel at 1-800-373-3328, extension 1010. And be sure to ask her about our special pre-cruise excursion in Boston. David and I look forward to seeing you. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Did you know that FamilySearch Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. It is preservation time at Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the radio root sleuth with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Hi, Tom. How are you? How is our preservation authority? I'm really, really good. Roots Tech was awesome. I'm trying to put things together, so hopefully by <laughs> next week's show, I can answer some of the questions that came to me at Roots Tech. Yes, so much. So much stuff oh, to cover, but uh, it was an amazing show. Hey, we've got another question here, and uh, this one comes from Olympia, Washington, where they listen to us on KMAS 1030 AM. And uh, the question is this. He says, Tom, I have all kinds of different files on a flash drive, and I want to make a compilation video. How do I do this mixing and matching all these different formats? Great question. That is. That's an awesome question. That's kind of a little bit like we talked about last week, but since there are all different kinds of file formats, again, you're going to need to find out what your end result is. In this case, you want a playable DVD. So, so you have to somehow standardize all these 
these into one format and decide what it is, yes? Exactly, exactly. We have people that bring us in a disc and say, hey, I played this on my DVD player, it won't play. We look at it and go, well, this is a Blu-ray disc. That's why it won't play on your DVD mm. player. Or they give us a DVD and say, hey, you know, this plays on my computer. Why won't it play on my DVD player? So I pop it in my computer. Then I look at the file types to see what kind they are. So if you've got all miscellaneous kind of file types, what you need to do is organize them. Okay, I've got all these AVIs. I've got these MOVs. I've got QuickTimes. I've got MP4s, whatever you have. And then if you can get them to play on your computer, you can save yourself a lot of money. If you're on a Mac, you just open them into QuickTime. If you're on a PC, usually the Windows program that comes with it will open it. And if you look down in the corner, usually it'll automatically pop up a little time code, like a little clock. They'll say, okay, you're on chapter one. There's eight chapters. You're at zero, zero, and it's three minutes and 14 seconds long or however. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll just make like a track sheet, like a professional editor would make for a movie. And you write, okay, I'm on file XYZ, it's a .mov, and I want it to start at 13 seconds, and I want it to run to 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Okay. And then we'll say, okay, and then I want this next one, which it says it's a .mp4, and it's ABC, and I want it to start at 14 minutes and go to 32 minutes. And write down all this information in the order you want it to be. A lot of people come in and say, this is what I don't want. A computer doesn't <laughs> understand, I don't want this, or take everything else. <laughs> right. You need to tell the computer, I want to start here, and I want to go to here, and we're the same way. So we enter in all these different edit points in it, and then let the computer basically do all the work for you, which will save you a lot of time and a lot of money that way. So what you're going to do, basically, is take these different things in different formats, edit them to what they're supposed to be, and and then standardize the format, I would assume, to an MP4, yes? Right. That's what I would suggest. The neat thing about MP4s are they're universal. They're like QuickTime. They'll right. play on about anything. Most of the big widescreen televisions will play MP4s. Apple and PC. Yep. Windows machines, Mac machines, OS X machines, anything that you have pretty much will play MP4s and QuickTimes. It's a great standard. It's good quality video, and it's ultra compressed without losing quality. So what we'll do, as you mentioned, we'll standardize all the things. Because like if you have MOVs, AVIs, and these different kinds of things, probably what we'll do is we'll edit them in their native format. So we'll get out this piece, we'll get out this piece, we'll get out this piece before we combine them and change them. Because there's no reason to go and change everything to an MP4 and then edit it. So we'll edit it in its native format because it's going to be a lot cleaner edits, a right. better quality. And then once we have some MOVs, some AVIs, some quick times or whatever, then we can turn them all into the MP4 or the AVI or the quick time, whatever you want. And some people bring us these same things, say, hey, I've got this old VHS, I want to turn it into Blu-ray. They think we have a magic wand They can take <laughs> this poor quality VHS and make it better by burning on a Blu-ray disc. We need to go back to what we talked about quite a while ago. You want to look at storage devices as boxes. And after the break, I'll explain to you the difference between a data disc and a playable DVD, for instance. Oh, boy, it sounds complicated, but, you know, if you're going to save your stuff, you've got to learn how this works. Take and, notes. And Tom's got more answers coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. 
Scientificstudies.com. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the GrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. We are back. Final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, talking with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And uh, Tom, yeah, I got to tell you, I can feel people's heads swimming right now talking (laughs) about converting formats and editing videos and assembling it all together. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is what has to happen. Otherwise, your stuff goes away. Oh, absolutely. In fact, at Roots Tech, we talked to more customers that came up to our booth about this exact subject. I've got all this stuff. I'm just overwhelmed. Wait, wait, wait. Don't be overwhelmed. Just take one box off the shelf for one videotape and start there and just do one at a time, one at a time, one exactly. at a time. Exactly. But the biggest question we got at Roots Tech is people get confused about, hey, I have this DVD. It says DVD on it, but I put it in my DVD player. Why won't it play? As in the first segment we talked about, we have different kinds of boxes storage things, whether it's a DVD, a CD, a Blu-ray, a flash drive, an SD card, whatever they are, they're just storage devices. They're different sizes of boxes. They're all boxes of whole stuff. When you hear DVD, people think, oh, video DVD. Well, there's also data DVD. Yes. So the disc itself doesn't care whether there's a video on it, whether it's data on it. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's a type of box, basically. Yes, it's a storage thing. Right, exactly. And they think of CDs as just audio. Especially in Africa, we get a lot of discs from Africa that are CDs that have video on them. Really? And they're really major compressed or in a kind of a weird format. It's not very good quality, but I guess they have more access to CDs than they do DVDs or it's just their culture. But we get these CDs that have ultra compressed video on them. So that CD is still a box. It's just a smaller box than the DVD, sure. where the Blu-ray is a bigger box. And when you get into thumb drives and SD cards, they're terabytes, they're gigabytes, they're all different kinds of sizes. So what you want to do is decide, okay, I've got all these files. This is what size they are. This is going to fit on a DVD, or I need to go on a Blu-ray because it's so big, not because of the quality. Now, one thing we've talked about before, when you're transferring film or anything that's optical, it's always best to go to Blu-ray because it's going to look better yes. because it gives us the opportunity to give you a bigger file that wouldn't fit on a DVD. And again, as a Blu-ray player plays a Blu-ray, it makes it look better, but it will also play DVDs better than a DVD machine does because it has what's called an up converter built right into it. So that's why when you get your new Blu-ray, you're looking at your old DVDs and say, wow, these look so much better on this big screen. Well, it's probably not your TV that's making them look better. It's now you're playing your old DVDs on a Blu-ray machine and it's up converting them. So that's why it looks better. So it doesn't matter whether you're using a CD, a DVD, or a Blu-ray. If you want a disc, it depends what size of information. For instance, audio. We've had people that have this huge record collection that we transfer for them. There are so many. We put them on MP3s, but we have to put on a, a data disc that's a DVD or multiple CDs. And they go, no, 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 that's fine. Put them on a DVD because I'm going to put on my computer and load on my hard drive once you're done compiling for me. So it really doesn't matter what kind of a device it's on. It's, again, what is your end product? Do you want to be able to play it in your car? Do you want to be play it on your MP3 player, your iPhone? What do you want to do with this? Let us know so when we convert it, we'll do it the right way. We had somebody a year ago that brought in a disc for us and said, I want 10 copies of this. So we made him 10 copies. He called us a year later and says, this won't play on my DVD player. (laughs) And so we went and researched and found out what it was. He brought us in a data disc and said, copy it. So we copied it. So he got exactly what he had before, but it wasn't a video DVD. It was a data DVD. So be really careful whenever you contact us, whoever you're working through, let them know what you have, what you need, and what your end use is going to be. 
and get to know what you're storing it on. Exactly. You have to know these things. And please, if you have any questions, just write me at asktom at tmcplace.com. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. All right. We'll talk to you next week, Tom. Thanks for coming by. Yep. We'll be ready with Roots Tech. Hey, that's our show for this week. Thanks once again to Dr. Kasha Brick from 23andMe.com coming on and talking about how DNA kind of affects how we come together as couples. Great stuff. If you missed it, make sure you listen to the podcast at ExtremeGenes.com, iTunes, the iHeartRadio talk channel. Thanks also to David Allen Lambert for helping me with the review of Roots Tech. We'll have more on that coming next week. Take care. We'll talk to you again next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 